Well, today I'm keeping things as simple as possible. I've come out with no bag, no tripod, no filters. I've just got my camera handheld and a standard 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Today I'm gonna to try something that I've never tried before. And it's been inspired by the photographer, Adrian Beasley, who I interviewed the other day for my Photographic Connections podcast. Now, Adrian is predominantly a black and white photographer. And if you know me and my work, you'll know that black and white photography isn't something I do that often but I do dabble in it for from time to time but Adrian assured me if I head out with my camera switched to monochrome modes that not only will I begin to see the world in a new way but it'll also help to make me a better photographer so I'm going to put his advice to the test today and see what images I managed to come up with in camera in monochrome mode. I'd never felt drawn to trying the monochrome mode in camera before one reason is because I love having the choice of choosing between colour and black and white imagery when I get home to edit. However, one thing I learnt from my chat with Adrian is when you photograph in black and white, your raw file is still in colour. I was able to confirm this when I got home. This gave me peace of mind to experiment with photographing this way and see whether using black and white would indeed help add a new dimension to my photography. I found in the initial images that I was struggling to see the world without colour and still composed my images accordingly. For this photo here, I was so glad that the raw file was colour, as I personally preferred it. However, by changing the composition of this subject, the other two images created, I felt, began to work well in black and white. I have to say, I am finding this quite challenging. I think when you're not used to viewing the world in a certain way, it can take a little bit of time to change your mindset and your perspective. But I'm thinking in the back of my mind, when I'm at home editing my images, what is it about my coloured images that make me want to convert them into black and white and see what they'll look like? And usually it's images that have got stark contrast between dark areas and light areas, or images with shapes, textures and patterns in them. So I'm thinking about that in the back of my mind while I'm walking around here today. And I'm a little bit gutted today because we were meant to have a day of really bright sunshine, back to back, clear sky day. And sunny days are meant to be really, really good for black and white photography because those sh dark shadows and bright highlights can give you that incredible contrast and light to really make your images pop. But Adrian assures me that you can get good black and white images in all weather conditions. So I'm thinking in the back of my mind, looking for textures, shapes, patterns, and bright areas and dark areas. And you've just seen the images I've taken so far. I loved the image of the leaf because the leaf was much brighter than the surrounding leaves, which really made it pop and stand out from everything else. So as I like that one, I'm thinking I'll look for more things like that. So. Let's see what else awaits us on this beautiful woodland walk. Now these are fairly bright in comparison to what's going on around it. So I wonder if this might be a good option for something. Let's have a look. Ooh, do you know what? I think we could be onto something here. I should have brought my macro lens with me. I think that would have worked really, really well in this, in this case, but I wanted to come light today just to, to make things as basic and simple and as easy as possible. So let's just see, see how these images turn out. One of the great things about black and white photography if you can get away with so much more than you ever could in colour. After all, most people don't see the world without colour, and therefore we aren't aiming to recreate what we see with the eye. With this in mind, one thing I loved was how the gaps in the trees created bokeh in the scene, which added an ethereal, magical look to these images.
the sun is out. The sun is out. Right, it doesn't look like it's going to last very long. Ooh, shadows, 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 shadows. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. this really really challenging it's probably partly because I don't do much woodland photography normally anyway and then trying to throw in the mix of black and white is it's, it's a lot of elements to bring together but also yesterday I was out filming what will be next week's video and I I made some images yesterday of beautiful spring leaves and I photographed them in colour and I was using my 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So I was quite far away from them and I was zooming into them, which was allowing me to get a beautiful sharp image of the leaves with the background really, really blurred. So I think I'm also struggling a bit with the fact that I've got my 24 to 70 millimeter lens, because while this is a more standardized lens in terms of kind of focal length, the sort of lens that a lot of people um, get when they first start photography, it's, I think in the back of my mind, I'm remembering the images I, I created yesterday and I absolutely love them and I'm excited to, to share them with you in next week's video. And I'm kind of thinking I would love to create more of that today. But I deliberately, like I say, left that lens at home to try and challenge myself and go back to basics. And it's a real, real challenge. It's a real challenge, but it's all about learning. It's all about learning. It's all about opportunity. And um, yeah, let's, let's just see. We've got the sun now coming and going which is adding more contrast and shadows. So um, oh, I'm sure we'll find something. I'm sure we'll find something. Going back to black and white images not having to look like reality, as well as seeing this in camera, it also opens up a whole new world of editing possibilities too. To allow some of these upcoming images to look more visually striking, I really pushed the contrast and blacks in them to help the subject stand out strongly in the scene. And hidden within these final two images is a real treat. This beautiful mini spider in his web, barely visible to the eye, but by stripping away the colour, this little creature could be seen. It's funny, isn't it, how I was speaking about the fact that it was meant to be sunny today and it's been overcast all day and it's now around 4pm and I speak about it in the video and it literally five minutes later the sun just comes out. It's almost like nature was listening to me and things have definitely got easier since the sun has come out. Now we all know in kind of stereotypical landscape photography that photographing on sunny days like today it's not great. You've got the harsh shadows, the harsh highlights. It's very difficult to expose your images. It's just the light is harsh and it washes a lot of stuff out. But black and white photography is brilliant because it allows you to really enhance the shadows, really enhance the, the highlights. And I think today, because I'm focusing so much on looking for these certain things, 
it's like other aspects of photography begin to be a bit more of a struggle. Like I'm struggling a little bit today with composition for some reason, but I think it's just bringing all these things together and learning something new. And I wanted to share that because it doesn't matter how many years you've been doing photography for or how skilled you become in a certain genre of photography. When you start dabbling in other areas and trying different techniques, it takes time to learn these new techniques and it takes time to bring every element of photography together. Your settings, your exposure, your composition, the lights, everything else to create that image along with whatever technique you're using. Then if you add filters and other accessories and stuff into the mix, you're learning all of that as well and bringing all of that in together. And when you start learning a new technique, it's like almost, not quite starting all over again, but it's, it's trying to bring everything you already know together with something new. And it's just that realization that it's okay to take time to, to learn new things and to discover new things and just to, to allow it to be part of the process. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. So of course, I'm just not very used to black and white photography. I always photograph in colour. And if I do black and white photography, I always convert it in Lightroom. Oh my gosh. I think we've got a red squirrel. I thought it was a red squirrel. Somebody told me they saw a red squirrel here yesterday, but it was a, a woodpecker, which is still brilliant to see, of course. But uh, red squirrels are like my favorite mammal, my favorite animal, my favorite wildlife species, full stop. I just love them. Um, but yeah, it was a woodpecker just on a, a tree over there and it, it kind of flew away as I started walking down the, the track. Beautiful to see though. But as I was saying, I always photograph in color and then I convert to black and white in post-processing. But you do definitely get a different feel for things when you're doing it straight in the camera. But it's new and it's something that's gonna take me a while to get used to, but it's definitely something I'm gonna try again in the future. Or what I might do in the future is, is switch between color and, and monochrome and just see what different results it has. It's always good to try different techniques, different settings on your camera, different genres of photography, because you always learn something. And when photography becomes more of a challenge, it, it's much more of a learning opportunity and as Adrian rightly said, black and white photography can definitely make you a better photographer because it teaches you more about form, about shapes, about patterns, about composition, about mood, about feeling and then you can bring all that together with your coloured photography and it just adds a whole new dynamic, dynamic to your images. So yeah, if you've not tried this technique, why not give it a go? The good thing about it is it doesn't matter what camera you have, even if it's just your phone or if it's a, a small compact point and shoot camera, you will be able to switch your camera to black and white mode and do this. So budget is not an issue at all with trying out this. And it'd be really interesting to hear if this is something you do often, photograph in camera in black and white. And if not, I wonder if this video has inspired you to, to give it a go. Like I say, black and white photography has never been my thing, really but I've actually quite enjoyed this afternoon despite how challenging it's been. And it has definitely given me some food for thought about the future of my photography. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday.